Hey guys, welcome to the next Let's Build with JavaScript. This is going to be uh, building a tabs component. And tabs are useful for basically showing a lot of content within one section as opposed to just uh, displaying block on each thing on a given page. So it technically helps with vertical height, uh, but it's also just a nice experience when you need to show uh, either comparison of things or a series of things at once and give the user the control to change or manipulate which tab they get to see, etc. So what I have here is some basic HTML content that is going to have a container wrapper. Um, sorry if you hear my computer fan, it's kicking on for some reason. So um, underneath is going to be a under, unordered list of our navigation links and these are going to be unique in such that they target actual ID elements. And what we'll do is with JavaScript actually find within that URL the target itself in the href and do some fun JavaScript to make that um, basically update and be kind of dynamic in the sense of if we add another tab in the future, I don't have to go back and edit the JavaScripts per se. So that's a great perk of um, writing what we're going to write with the JavaScript. So again, this isn't focused so much on the UI and HTML and CSS of it, but I do have some stuff here you can reference. I'll definitely link to it, uh, but we're using some SAS. It's basic, basic stuff. Um, but so far, if I were to click this stuff, nothing works, which isn't what we want. So to fix this, we'll need to add some JavaScript. And as you know, if you've been following along, I, my approach is going to be very vanilla uh, JavaScript based. So I'm going to avoid jQuery or any type of framework starting out at least. So maybe planned again to go with bigger frameworks later, but we'll, we'll talk about that when we get to it. So let's kick it off. And essentially we're gonna be adding an event listener for each click that's going to fire a function, just similar to I did a video I did before, which was for our, uh, what was that component? Or a, a fixed nav when you scroll. So this is a different event listener, but it is something we can fire a bunch of stuff at once when a person clicks, which is great. So the first thing I want to do is add a element further down the screen. I'm just going to call a const element. It's going to be document and then I'll get um, the element by ID. I'm referencing notes, so bear with me. So it'll be nav tab and what that is, okay, we're querying the DOM for this ID of this UL called nav tab. Here, when you run get element by ID, you don't need to pass in the hash mark like you would with jQuery. If you did do a query selector though, which is like the, the new school jQuery thing, you could pass that through. So that's kind of a confusing thing. Uh, to remember, but it is something to remember. We'll do the element by ID just because. So when we find that element, uh, we want to take that element, add event listener, and we're going to call a click event or listen for a click event. And on we're going to call this function on tab click. And then we'll pass false, which is just a, another parameter you can pass if you need more options in the add event listener function. Uh, definitely check out the docs on like MDN or something to see what that's all about. Most times you don't need to pass stuff, but I'm, again, not a pro with JS yet. Uh, so now this is going to be a function, and we haven't defined that yet. So let's do that now. So function on tab click, close that off. Great. So that's our, our basically our scaffold for getting started here. We need a query for all of our active tabs because we need to just basically know when to deactivate the active tab and add a new active tab to the one you clicked on. So that sounds confusing and it kind of is, but we need to actually get all instances of active stuff. So you'll notice there is an active class on the first tab 
here and then there's another here so what we can do is get another variable we can say maybe let in this case so we'll say active tabs equals document dot query selector in this case we're going to use all so that means get all of them and we're going to look for the class of active okay and then from there we can do a loop and we're going to use a for loop so we'll use for var i equals zero I can't type i is less than active tabs dot length and then i plus plus so this is a for loop and that's what that looks like and basically it's it's setting an instance of the variable i which we can use let here and i we're gonna check it's gonna iterate through every active um, tab in this case it's going to check if that tabs have a length and then if it's less than the instance we're going to add it each time so it's basically just saying find all these things and what we'll do another way you could write this too if you want to do like active tabs dot for each pass in a function pass in like the tab and then you could do something like this. I'm going to comment this one out. And then for each one, we'll take tab dot class name and set that. This is an assigner. So we're not comparing anything here. We're setting set this to this. And then we'll say uh, tab dot class name dot replace active with nothing so that's how you could do that and then we might come back to this and I'll show you the other way to write this in fact I'll do that now just so it's you can see the difference so this is the older school way of doing it and 4h is kind of the ES5 newer way of doing it so up to you how you want to do it to me this is more clear so in this instance, we'll do active tabs. We'll have access to that variable. And then we need to get that instance of I instead of tab in our function here. And then we'll do the class name equals, again, active tabs I. And we'll set that class name dot replace dot active and then nothing. So that's that way of doing it. And what this is going to do is deactivate. So we'll say deactivate existing active tabs or tab and panel. Cool. So next we want to do we want to activate the new tab that you clicked on. So activate new tab and panel. So we need an event based on what our click is doing and we can get that by passing event or some sort of variable in here. You can call it whatever you want. E is common. I like event because it's explicit. I know what that is. Uh, so then you could say event dot target. So we can say we'll go we'll console this at this point see what happens so I can get let me move me over You'll move me there Your console I think this will work here yeah so we get that when we console log the event dot target so then we could do um, we want to find the parent element so parent element again run that then we get that li which is what we're after that's the actual tab and then we can get the class name uh, 
again click on that and right now it's nothing click on that nothing because we're actually essentially calling what we did before so that's what's happening uh, but what we'll use is the event.target class name here and then we're gonna set it you can do that in one fell swoop with the plus equals to active and we need a, an actual space there or if you want to add back ticks you can up to you so that sets that each time so isn't that cool so now we have an active class on each tab click unfortunately it's not working on our tab below so we need to actually come come through and figure out the ID on that tab as you can see here home corresponds to home in this link so to do that we can go further and say get the ID by uh, ID and then we're gonna get the event.target again if you remember we constant log that so maybe I'll do that again what we want to find is event.target let's see what that is first that's you it's obviously I think for me I'm thinking it's gonna be the link so yep okay and then we need to get the href uh, attribute from that so href cool so now we have that link which is a crazy code pin link um, but normally it would just be like slash hash messages in that case uh, so that's part of the way there and then we need to split up the link to separate the actual ID and the hash so you do that in this way you can do it just by passing one in that array so now we get that ID name so if we just did without the, the one we get like two two bits of that array and we have those those both to work with but now we need to just get that first instance and an array starts at zero so in, in programming objects and arrays start at zero so this first bit with the quotes is one or zero excuse me and then messages is one so in essence we're just kind of doing that with our code so doing that again I can click on messages and I just get that which is perfect so from there we can go and say this whole thing take it outside of the console.log I'll come back up into our document get element by ID you notice now that since we have that ID name we can access it with the query so I can actually query the DOM in a dynamic way so now I can do this and in fact console that so if I click here it gets me that whole tab so pretty cool right so what we can do at that point is I'll remove that console it's getting a little hairy take the class name of that tab and then do the same thing with the plus equals active so we'll do a space there as well so at the end of the day we'll save that and I don't need this one clear console I think I can just type clear okay no I can't <laughs> so essentially it works for it to cool. I could have different content here to show a little more context maybe I'll make one a little more and that didn't work Lorem. so the profile panel will have more copy so essentially that is how that works and if you wanted to get a little more modern we could try it with our for each loop pretty neat so use use this at your own discretion feel free to to use the for loop or the active tabs for each loop. I find the for each loop to be a little more legible because I know for each active tab I'm going to do this thing as opposed to this kind of programmatic archaic looking thing where you have to remember what 
plus plus means, dot length means, all those things. Uh, one thing I just spotted is if you do click off anywhere else, like over here, it goes away. So that's a little bug. Um, I'd have to fix that up. But all in all, it works. Um, you feel free to experiment on this. Maybe throw your own version in a code pen and share it and uh, let me know if you could fix that bug. That'd be cool. That'd be a cool little homework assignment. But other than that, that's how you create tabs. Uh, hopefully you found it useful. I, again, I will share this link and you guys can go to town on it if you want. Thanks for watching and I'll continue this series on again. Um, just kind of learning myself. So my goal is to just keep it going, keep it getting more progressively advanced. So bear with me if I make mistakes. Um, I'm human. So anyway, peace.